In the world of Naruto, we've had dozens of memorable battles, and one of the most iconic battles in the series had huge ramifications of the story is the battle of Naruto versus Sasuke, which concluded in Naruto Volume 26. We saw Sasuke looking over the unconscious body of a 13-year-old Naruto, and Sasuke, after a moment of reflection, walked off into the darkness to join Orochimaru. However, what if this never happened? What if Sasuke never got the chance to join Orochimaru because Naruto accidentally killed Sasuke during their final battle? How would the Naruto story change? Would things end up for better or would they end up for worse? In today's edition of Naruto What If, we're going to look at just that. In order for this to happen, we must first establish a trigger point and there's no better trigger point than the moment where an enraged Naruto and Sasuke had their Shidori versus Rasengan clash. Now, originally, Naruto wasn't aiming for Sasuke's body with the attack. He maintained enough control that he was able to go out of his way to scratch Sasuke's headband, something that Sasuke had previously said that Naruto would never be able to do. However, in this timeline, Naruto would overestimate the amount of force that he had used, and instead of scratching the headband, Naruto's attack would just leave a hole in the middle of Sasuke's skull, killing him upon impact. Naruto would pass out seconds later like he did in the original timeline, and Sasuke's lifeless body would be on the ground next to him. This causes a major change in the timeline. Zetsu would be watching the entire fight from the distance, but before he could act swiftly to capture Naruto or retrieve Sasuke's body, Kakashi would arrive on the scene. A very emotional Kakashi would drop down to his knees upon seeing one student unconscious and the other one dead. As Kakashi scooped up both Naruto and Sasuke into his arms, Kakashi would make the same remark that he did before bringing up the irony of Naruto and Sasuke fighting at the Valley of the Inn, but this time he'd go a step further, remarking how the first Hokage once killed his former friend at this same spot, and now Naruto had done the same, remarking that history repeated itself once again, and that both times it had been in Chia who had died here. As they travel back to Konoha, escorted by the medical unit who would now be carrying Sasuke, Naruto would be briefly woken up before passing out once again. When they arrive in Konoha, the mood would be a lot more dire and grim than before. Shikamaru would hang his head even lower, knowing that not only had his first mission as a Chunin led to so many of his teammates being on death's door, but the objective of their mission hadn't just ended in failure to capture Sasuke, but the battle itself had resulted in the death of Sasuke all together. Tamari and Shikamaru's father would have a harder time trying to talk him off the ledge of quitting as a ninja, but I still do believe Shikamaru would remain as a ninja, especially as the news that Choji made it through surgery had come across to him. Ino and Sakura's visit to the hospital wouldn't be nearly as much of a sigh of a relief as it was originally. Neither of them knew that Sasuke wasn't in the village, but Sakura was of the belief that Sasuke was still there. Assuming the news of Sasuke's death is kept under wraps, just as the news originally about the mission being a failure was hidden, Eno would likely learn that Sasuke was dead when Choza gives a status update on Choji, and Sakura would hear the words he's dead on the other side of the door as she listened in, leading to the inevitable mental breakdown that would occur just before Tsunade arrived, except for in this timeline, she wouldn't be coming to look at Naruto's injuries, but to check on him mentally for the death of his comrade. Naruto wouldn't be able to look at a crying Sakura in the eyes, and Shikamaru would still try to explain what happened to Sakura as he did in the original timeline, but Naruto would be just as devastated as Sakura, if not worse. He made a promise to bring back Sasuke to the village, but not like this. Sasuke was supposed to have been brought back to her alive, not dead. Sakura would recall how all she could do was cry before, begging Naruto to stop Sasuke and to bring him back, and how powerless she felt, and now she'd be crying all over again. I do believe that Sakura would leave the room a shell of herself, blaming herself for being useless, and in time, that self-directed anger would build up inside of her, just as it did originally, when she approached Tsunade to become her apprentice, believing if she had been a medical ninja, she might have been able to do something to assist Naruto in bringing Sasuke back. Meanwhile, as Kakashi visited Obito's grave, he'd have a heavier conscience than in the original timeline. Jiraiya would appear in Naruto's window, ready to check on his godson. Jiraiya would be forced to approach the elephant in the room after telling Naruto that the Akatsuki wouldn't be after him for another 3 or 4 years because Naruto would likely go off on a tangent like he did originally when he said he needed to save Sasuke from Orochimaru, but instead, this time, it would be about how he didn't care about the Akatsuki because he killed Sasuke. Jiraiya would have to take a tougher stance than he did originally when he told Naruto Naruto to forget about Sasuke. He'd have to tell him that Sasuke and Orochimaru were cut from the same cloth, and that if Naruto can't move past what he'd done, then, then he'd have to have the Anbu Black Ops watching his every move and tell Tsunade to have him restricted to the village, just like he threatened to do originally. Jiraiya would be forced to tell 
Naruto of his failed encounter to stop Orochimaru from leaving Konoha and how he didn't want Naruto to suffer the same way he did but in some ways Naruto had it worse because whereas he couldn't stop Orochimaru Sasuke had been killed by Naruto but Jiraiya would tell Naruto he did Sasuke a mercy by killing him before he could have become something like Orochimaru that couldn't be saved telling Naruto that the ninja system led to Orochimaru becoming Orochimaru and ultimately Sasuke dying at such a young age and that as a ninja it's Naruto's duty to endure no matter how painful it is which would lead to Naruto saying he'd find a way to be the change to the shinobi system when he became Hokage one day so there wouldn't be another Sasuke which would lead to having enough there for Jiraiya to still make Naruto a student but Jiraiya would know deep down that Naruto was hurting inside which likely leads to Kakashi speaking to Naruto in front of Obito's grave telling the story of how he got the Sharingan as well as how Rin died telling Naruto that the pain that we feel today doesn't go away it'll always live with you but that pain is something that you take and you use it to protect the comrades you still have left meanwhile Zetsu would inform the Akatsuki that Sasuke been killed and Konoha is in possession of his body the news would internally rattle Itachi upon hearing it likely leading to a moment of reflection on Itachi's part wondering if the decisions he made up to this point had been the correct ones the younger brother he gave up everything for had now just died and upon learning that Sasuke was on his way to Orochimaru when he died Itachi has two decisions to make during the two and a half year time skip does he go through with the threat that he made to Donzo and go full scorched earth by revealing the intel he had on Konoha since his younger brother's now dead? Or does Itachi redirect that anger towards Orochimaru for corrupting his younger brother? In my opinion, I believe Itachi during that two and a half year time skip likely makes it a point to track down Orochimaru by any means necessary and kills Orochimaru, making it the one final check mark for his legacy, knowing that his life is soon going to come to an end due to Itachi's illness. In the process of that battle, Itachi or Kisame likely kill Kabuto during that skirmish. The deaths of Orochimaru and Kabuto create major changes in the timeline. Some immediate and others would be later on down the line. Itachi would be known as the man who killed Orochimaru and word would likely spread to other hideouts likely leading to other prisoners breaking free at some point and given that Suigetsu is locked away seemingly alone it's very likely Suigetsu spends his days in a test tube oblivious to the world around him with no one there to free him like Sasuke did to him in Naruto chapter 346, Suigetsu remained floating in his test tube. At some point during their travels, Jiraiya would learn that Itachi killed Orochimaru and the news would make him wonder more about Itachi. He knew that Orochimaru left Akatsuki in the past, but the idea that Sasuke's brother tracked down Orochimaru, it would feel personal and it would make him think back to Sasuke, wondering if there was more to Itachi to cause him to deviate from the Akatsuki's biju hunt to kill Orochimaru since Itachi wouldn't have had a reason to want Orochimaru dead. If Itachi wanted to blame anyone on the surface level, why wouldn't he target Naruto, the one who had actually killed Sasuke if it was merely about revenge? Jiraiya would begin to see more beneath the surface. Meanwhile, I don't think Danzo would be able to get his hands on Sasuke's Sharingan, just because Tsunade likely would have had the body disposed of as a precaution due to the nature of the Sharingan's value and it falling into the wrong hands, but also due to the secrets that Sasuke's body would hold. While there might be an argument for taking Sasuke Sharingan and giving it to another ninja given how valuable it is Konoha already had Kakashi of the Sharingan and Tsunade would know that even Kakashi had issues using the Sharingan because genetically he wasn't an Uchiha and if an elite in Kakashi had struggles with the Sharingan what good would it do someone else? The only person Tsunade might give that Sharingan to would actually be Naruto but for the purpose of this video we're not going to give Naruto the Sharingan ultimately I believe Sasuke Sharingan would be sealed or outright destroyed to prevent it from falling in the wrong hands. Naruto, in my opinion, would return back from his two and a half year time skip training much stronger than before due to an increased drive and wanting to get stronger so he could do what Kakashi told Naruto before the time skip, which is to use the pain that he felt to protect his friends who remain. And due to him wanting to gain better control of the Ninetales power, Naruto would be more determined to master this power so as to prevent anyone from dying when he lost control again. However, I don't believe Naruto would master his power outright yet, though I do believe he'd be strong-willed enough to have even better control, potentially going all the way up to the fifth tail without losing control of his consciousness. By extension, I could see Sakura emerging from the time skip much stronger than before and much more skilled than before due to the trauma of losing Sasuke, though the first time we see Naruto back in the village might be a bit awkward, but I believe the two of them will be able to move past it given the gap in time as well as the distance 
distance between the two over two and a half years. Gar was still going to have the one tails extracted from him and Saucer is still falling in battle to Sakura and Shio. Naruto might be more enraged when he fought Dator, but this time when he starts sprouting tails, Naruto will be able to maintain consciousness for longer. Where the next major change occurs is that Sakura never questions Sasori about Orochimaru because Konoha would know that Itachi killed Orochimaru, though it is possible Sakura views wanting to kill Itachi as a way of wanting to make things right for Sasuke since Sasuke is now dead and the idea of accomplishing something her dead teammate wanted could be on the table, which means she could question about Itachi. However, even if that's given the case, given Akatsuki are constantly on the move, the best Sasori could give her with intel is to look for the foretells since that that was Kisame's target and wherever Kisame is that's where Itachi would be. Assuming that this is the case the Tenchi bridge arc would be a lot different. Yamato would still be named co-captain of team 7 and Sai would be placed on the team but his orders would be to try and find and eliminate Itachi so Danzo could close the book on the Uchiha clan once and for all. The team might likely start looking near or even in the stone village since Roshi is the Jinchuriki of the foretells and this would be assuming that his identity was known by Danzo or anyone in Konoha since the identity of a Jinchuriki is usually kept top secret. Given that Team Kuronai was already on a mission, I don't think the members would join in the Itachi hunt right away and due to the movements of Hidan and Kakuzu, I could foresee a scenario where they don't get involved in all. Hidan was still kill Asma and that's where a major change would occur as Team Yamato will be called back to Konoha after Asma's death which I could see being a possibility since looking for Hidan and Kakazu inside the land of fire would be more of a priority. Where things get really interesting and change in this timeline is that Naruto never learns the Rasen Shuriken in this timeline. Originally Kakashi only thought to give Naruto change in chakra nature training to create a more unique version of his Rasengan because Kakashi heard firsthand how drastically Sasuke powered up to the point where an elite Joni like Yamato was nothing before Sasuke. The same trigger is not there and there is nothing to suggest Kakashi was even thinking about teaching Naruto changing chakra nature drills before this because it's not something expected of a shinobi until they become a Chunin. Assuming this ends up being the case, I do believe Naruto and Team 7 would join Team 10 and Kakashi in the revenge battle against Hidan and Kakazu after Asuma's funeral giving Shikamaru more pieces to utilize during the rematch. With a higher grade of difficulty due to not having the Rasen Shuriken, I could see Kakazu dying after Shikamaru kills Hidon. Where things get really interesting is with the character Asai. Originally, after he broke away from Team 7, Sai's picture book was found, and between the picture book and wanting to understand Team 7's loyalty to Sasuke, a traitor to the village, Sai began to change throughout that arc. Given the current timeline, I think the same change in Sai occurs, but it happens much slower and naturally over time, with Kakashi likely being the one who eventually gets through to Sai, since Sai did state that Kakashi is a legend in the Anbu. However, where our next major change occurs is with Itachi himself. Itachi would be nearing the end of his natural lifespan if he hadn't died already since he was only prolonging his life to make sure he could die by Sasuke's hands and set up his backup plan in the form of Shisui's Koto Masukami to be used on Sasuke in the event that Sasuke is corrupted by the Akatsuki. One of two things could happen here before the end of Itachi's natural life. He could confront Obito and use Shisui's eye to make Obito willingly destroy the Akatsuki in order to protect Konoha but this would be assuming that Itachi and Obito were in the same room and since Obito Obito at this period in time was pretending to be Toby and partnering up with Daedara, this makes it a little bit more difficult. If Itachi goes to seek out Daedara and Toby, there's a chance Kisame gets suspicious due to there being no reason for them to cross paths and the fact that you also have Daedara wanting to kill Itachi at this point. If by some reason Itachi does pull this off, Obito realistically kills the whole Akatsuki until Zetsu triggers the seal that Madara placed on Obito's heart. Assuming that Zetsu can do this however and the story will end here. However, given Obito and Itachi never crossed paths physically during this period in time, I think the only real option is that Itachi presents himself in front of Naruto and still gets Naruto Shisui's eye with a different program for the Koto Masakami placed into it by Itachi. Itachi at some point would die from his ninja aids after Kisame captured the foretells and from here things would get more interesting. Akatsuki would be down serious manpower at this point. Itachi is dead. Sasori is dead. Hidan is dead. Kakuzu is dead. 
The only remaining members would be Daedra, Conan, Zetsu, Kisame, Tobi slash Obito, and Pain. Instead of moving in two-man teams, it is possible that Akatsuki's forced to move in three-man teams now due to the dwindling numbers, unless Obito and Nagato find new recruits, which I don't believe that would happen this far into the game. Akatsuki would have already sealed away two Biju during the time skip, and four more Biju since the Naruto time skip with the one, two, three, and four tails now being sealed away, leaving only three more Jin Shuriki to hunt down. I could see Kisame being sent after the Six Tail since the Six Tail was originally from Kisame's village. After Jiraiya infiltrates the Rain Village and dies, I could see the next two changes occurring. I still believe that Obito would have Pain and Konan go after Naruto, who would be busy learning Sage Mode. However, I believe Obito and Daedara would go to the Cloud Village, and I believe the two of them would be able to capture Killer B, though I think Daedara would likely attract a lot of attention in the process. And to be honest, I could see Killer B just outright killing Dater at some point, which then allows Obito to fight at full strength and capture Killer B even after B transforms into the eight tails and I don't believe that Obito will fall for B's tentacle trick. Naruto was still going to defeat Pain and get Nagato to revive everyone in Konoha. Tsunade would be rendered unconscious and I believe the five Kage summit would still be called if for no other reason than the Raikage seeing Daedra's dead body or a scratch headband which means in this timeline his ire would be directed towards the stone village and the Suchikage. Obito would declare war as he did originally in this timeline but he point out that he has eight of the nine B you now. No Sasuke means that there's no battle with the Raikage and Danzo returns to Konoha having represented Konoha at the Five Kage Summit on top of having the Feudal Lord's approval beforehand. However, where things get really interesting is if Gar makes it known to Konoha that Danzo not only used deception at the summit, but also given the attempt on Al's life, the Mizukage likely sends word of what happened as well. This would be enough room for pause to cause debate within the Jonin Council before the Feudal Lord, with the Jonin Council's vote still being needed to make the Hokage selection permanent and by the time Shizune announces that Tsunade is awake there's ground to say that Tsunade could be reinstated as Hokage as an effort to maintain balance with the other nations given how badly Danzo screwed things up. In my opinion given all of this Tsunade would resume her duties as Hokage overcoming Danzo's efforts to have her removed and Tsunade will be the one in charge of the five Kage's shinobi army since Gar showed knowledge that since while Gar did show knowledge that impressed Mufune, Gar was too young and inexperienced to be the leader. Donzo had a good run at it even without Koto Masukami, but Donzo ruined his chances. And now Donzo's no longer Hokage. The Raikage had too much of a hot head and only gained leadership once he cooled down after the fact, which wouldn't happen in this timeline once he learned that Killer B was dead. Anoiki would be damaged goods because of his shinobi being the cause of this for the Kage summit in the first place and him openly admitting he's employed the Akatsuki before. When it comes to Mei the Mizukage, nobody believes Mei would be chosen, leaving Tsunade, the member of the legendary Sanin, to lead the Shinobi army. Also, because Naruto never went to the Five Kage summit, there's a strong likelihood that Obito never tells the truth about the Uchiha massacre and Itachi, which means that Itachi's secret stays in the grave with Itachi. Where things get really interesting now is the fact that Tsunade is in charge. There's a likelihood that she will be willing to allow Naruto to join the battlefield against Obito's army, which will now be significantly weaker due to Kabuto not being around for Edo Tensei. However, on the other side of things, the Akatsuki would have an alive Kisame on the battlefield during the war on top of the Zetsu army. I could see someone like the Raikage still being able to talk Tsunade into having Naruto train at Turtle Island to master the Ninetales and having sound logic in doing so. He'd point out that Naruto doesn't have full control of the Ninetales, but the enemy has eight Biju and they defeat a perfect Jinchuriki and Killer B. Sending Naruto into a war with eight other Biju at the enemy disposal on top of an enemy who has this level of power would have been ill-advised. I believe Tsunade would still have Naruto sent to Turtle Island. While B isn't a Alive to help master the nine tails, certain steps like the waterfall of truth and training in the room for Jinchuriki are still things known by others. I believe that Naruto will still master the waterfall of truth and Naruto will be instructed on how to interact with Kurama. Though B isn't around, given the nature of the temple that they go to, I could see someone knowing how to walk Naruto through how to gain access to that room where they keep the biju. Despite having a stronger will than he did in the original timeline, Kashina would still appear to help Naruto with the nine 
details being tamed, which would lead to that moment between mother and son. Meanwhile, given that Kisame never fought B, there would be no way for Obito to learn the location where Naruto's being held, which means that Yamato's never captured, and instead, Obito's forced to take a more direct approach. Meanwhile, the fourth great ninja war would commence as usual, but there will be some differences here. Not having the Edo Tensei to deal with means that the battle against the Zetsu army goes a lot smoother until nightfall of day one of the war, which still ends with Zetsu's attack on the medical unit being an utter failure since Sakura would still spoil Zetsu's plan. At some point during day two of the war, Kakashi and Guy's team would likely end up fighting against Kisame, who would be an utter monster on the battlefield between using Samihara and using his water dome jutsu, but between Kakashi and Guy on the battlefield, Kisame would end up getting killed in the fight, striking a heavy blow against the Akatsuki. Where things get more interesting is Obito, who would still have gone on to collect the Rinnegan and kill Konan. However, in this timeline, Kabuto was the one who reanimated the dead Jinchuriki, and Obito then used the Rinnegan six pass jutsu to make his six pass of Obito. Since it is unknown if the Akatsuki kept the dead bodies of the Jinchuriki, Jinchuriki after their extraction, I don't think we can comfortably go with the six pass of Obito route. However, Obito at some point would go onto the battlefield after Kisame's death and would be able to use the Rinnegan Jutsu in a strategic manner from the basic six pass Jutsu to, if needed to, the Gido Mazu statue if he ran into any Kona Hashinobi who knew how to counter Rinnegan Jutsu, which is why he never used any of the basic Jutsu against Kakashi or Guy. If push came to shove, Obito would release the Biju that were sealed in inside the Gidomazu in order to be controlled and destroy chunks of the alliance. This will push Tsunade to make a decision. Also, originally Naruto learned of what happened in the outside world and chose to leave Turtle Island, given he himself would be working to control the Ninetales power alone and figuring out for himself, it's very possible that Naruto learns even faster than before about the war since there's no one there to distract him, which means he'd head out even sooner than Sunrise a day two of the war. If we assume this happens, then Tsunade's hand would be forced when she and the Raikage went to stop Naruto. Originally, she needed to defer to the Raikage, but in this scenario, she'd have the command to overrule the Raikage, and if the Raikage did insist on turning things physical, a serious Tsunade is physically stronger than the Raikage. However, I don't think it ever comes down to a fight. Instead, I believe Tsunade would be persuaded by Naruto despite Naruto not having a full mastery of Kurama, despite having a chakra cloak, simply because the progress he made in such a short period of time. Instead, I believe Tsunade would be persuaded by Naruto so despite not despite Naruto not having full mastery of Kurama, the sight of his chakra cloak, and simply the progress he made in such a short period of time, and the fact that Naruto as a character tends to make the most progress as he figures things out in his own way, it's possible that Tsunade is won over by Naruto's talk no jutsu and decides to make a gamble on him. However, this is where things get really interesting. Given Obito is using Biju on the battlefield, originally it was a combination of learning the real Madara Uchiha had been reanimated and dropped meteors on the Shinobi Alliance and the revelation that the masked man wasn't Madara, that's what caused the Vaikage to head to the battlefield. However, the fact that so soon after Naruto's arrival turns the tide in battle, and given the lack of Edo Tensei, the Zetsu army would have been destroyed and now Obito's using Biju to wipe out chunks of the alliance. I believe Tsunade and the five Kage would go to the battlefield. However, given how Kakashi and Guy were able to hold their own against the Edo Tensei Jinchuriki, even in their version two states, I believe Obito using the Jinchuriki, I believe Obito using the Biju against Naruto and the Kage, potentially being backed up by members of the alliance like Kakashi and Guy, would pay huge dividends in the pending battle. However, the most the moment that Naruto and Obito lock eyes, a major change in the timeline would occur. The crow that Itachi placed into Naruto would emerge at the site of Obito's Sharingan and cast Koto Masukami on Obito with the order to destroy Akatsuki which would lead to Obito kamuing away to Zetsu's primary location and killing Zetsu, and by extension, killing himself once since he's also part of the Akatsuki. In time, the sensory unit will locate Obito's last known chakra signature and discover the dead body, with Naruto confused about what happened until someone like Al sees Shisui's eye inside the crow and realizes what happened. However, upon seeing the dead body of Obito, assuming Kakashi's there when the team discovers it, Kakashi's mind would be shattered at the 
revelation of his childhood friend being the leader of the Akaski. That being said, with Zetsu dead and Obito dead as well, Madara is never revived and Kage is never revived either. Kakashi likely takes Obito's other Sharingan, vowing to use the eyes of his friend to help guide this world into the direction where it never fails another Obito again. This now in turn gives Kakashi both Mangekyo's Sharingan powers as well as the Susano. Given Obito's corpse would have had one Rinnegan and them potentially being in the location where the second Rinnegan was hidden, Tsunade has a decision to make about the Rinnegan since she's the leader of the Alliance. The power of a god is in both of these eyes. I could see her and the other Kages agreeing to have the eye destroyed so as to prevent its power from falling into the wrong hands. Or I could see someone contemplating or even Naruto himself asking for the eyes that once belonged to Nagato, but given Naruto be the final Jinchuriki left, since the Gidomazu statue is likely destroyed following Obito's death, there are huge questions that need to be brought up here. Does Tsunade allow the Biju to be returned to their respective villages? It's very possible. In fact, I think it's likely. However, I could also see Anoiki and the Raikage raising enough fuss over Konoha being in possession of Kakashi with two Sharingan and being in possession of the Rinnegan. Though the battles they fought in the war could lead to more civil discussion, but in my opinion, it's likely the eyes destroyed. In the aftermath of the war, Tsunade would continue to be Hokage and as time passes by and Naruto fully masters the power of Kurama, I could see Tsunade making Naruto 6 Hokage in his late 20s unless she decides to retire early and allow Kakashi to be 6 Hokage until Naruto matures. Meanwhile, Danzo gets his Hashirama cell arm ripped off and he gets Shisui Sharingan taken out of his eye socket because of how reckless and how underhanded Donzo is, and just plainly because it's fuck Donzo. Given Kaguya's never revived, I don't believe that Teneri would attempt to destroy the Earth since Kaguya's revival played a huge role in him wanting to do so. But if he does decide to do so, or even attempts to snatch Hinata, he eats a Rasengan to the face, though the battle might be a lot closer this time given the fact that Naruto only has one half of the Nine Tails in this timeline. Sakura spends her days wondering what could have been with Sasuke, and likely becomes a cat lady. Anna Teneri came for Hinata, then Naruto realizes his, his love for Hinata, and if Teneri doesn't, then Naruto eventually realizes that Hinata makes his Uzumaki ramen noodle doodle go wee wee and decides to start a family with her. However, on the downside, because Sasuke died earlier in the timeline, the cycle of hatred would not be over and Boruto is likely renamed Sasuke in this timeline. However, that's where we're gonna bring this what if to an end. 